So we're standing in Bromley by Bow in front of a really beautiful piece of 18th century architecture that started its life as part of Northumberland House in the Strand. The Strand was once lined with these really fantastic palaces built in the 17th century along really what was believed at the time to be the finest road in Europe. One by one in the 19th century they were pulled down when the embankment was built and this palace was in fact the last one of all to go. One of the fascinating things about this house and the arch is that in fact only six years before this spectacular house was demolished in 1874 the Duke and Duchess of Northumberland had done rather a major refurbishment of the house so clearly they had no intention for their spectacular mansion to be pulled down which is even more tragic and it really is probably one of London's greatest losses. Two parts of its masonry survived. One is the lion, the Percy Lions, now in Sion House, and the other one is this arch. And it was bought by someone called George Rutty, who owned a house here in Bromley by Bow called Tudor House. It was rather a big house with rather grand gardens, and he had it as an interesting garden feature. And in 1900, as so many of these private estates around London are being turned into public spaces, public parks, this indeed also uh, went the same way and it was bought by the local county council who turned it into a public park and the arch was just embedded in a wall in the back of the garden. And there it stayed until 1998 when this new community centre was built. It was brought back from the, um, from the back of the garden and it was installed as the main entrance to the community centre. So few people know its history and one of the reasons that we wanted to get involved at the Heritage of London Trust is A, it needed restoration, it had a really bad uh, thick sulfation crust which actually rather excitingly had not been cleaned off ever since it was in the Strand. So what we've just been restoring is, and removing is the original Victorian filthy crust from central London. Um, but one of the reasons that we wanted to get involved is that the community centre is a really flourishing example of the community centre behind us. It uh, does amazing work and a huge amount of people use it in the community and what we really wanted was that people who use this arch who walk through it to use all the services provided by the Bromley by Bow Centre, know a little bit about its history and know how it connects to uh, this astonishing palace and also a little bit about how special its survival is. People around here are proud to have something, you know, so old and still being used practically, you know, it's not just a monument someone comes along and takes photos for, it actually serves as a good entrance. It always looked pretty dirty and so when the opportunity came across for us to get funding to give it a good clean, uh, we jumped at the chance. It's really easy to build stuff in a deprived community that serves the community, but we went above and beyond that so it's you know we've used all the best quality materials the best architects the best builders so you know because we're such a poor borough you know we deserve a bit of bling and a bit of glam and a bit of history so this is a project that the heritage london trust has 100 percent funded and we have been working with london stone conservation as we work with them for quite a lot of our projects and in fact, for us, it's a particularly exciting project because it's the first one that we're doing as part of our Proud Places programme, which is supported by the Jones Day Foundation. And it's a chance for us to invite young people from the local community to engage in the project, to find out about its history, to explore their own creative responses to it, and to understand a little bit about the conservation. We've had a, a fantastic group of young people come and take an interest in this project and they've had really interesting creative responses to it which is exactly what we're encouraging and in fact have been interested in all sorts of aspects of the site that we wouldn't necessarily have thought would have captured them so that's been really satisfying. I'm currently studying English Literature and Creative Writing at Queen Mary. Uh, it's a four year course that I'm doing a year abroad and to me being able to take part in like restoration work and just understanding the history of the, of the works. It's quite important, especially because uh, for the next year, I'm going to be doing um, a lot of my work is centered around London's history, especially with a lot of lit literary history and whatnot. And when you told us about um, Father Thames, I found that quite interesting because I never knew about like who he was, as well as the history and how when they polluted the river, his image changed. And I personally, I'd like to write a piece of literature around Father Thames. So this is the sort of project that the Heritage of London Trust really loves. It's a fragment from another time. It's had a fantastic survival story. It's been transported from one part of London to another. And it's very little known and very little understood. And in fact, until recently, people had thought, well, it's a beautiful, clearly a beautiful landscape feature. It must be William Kent. In fact, it's 
nothing to do with William Kent. It was designed by Daniel Garrett as part of his uh, 1750s restoration of Northumberland House. It, interestingly, he did quite a lot of work in the north, but there are elements of London. He was a protege of Lord Burlington. And in fact, part of Savile Row was designed by Daniel Garrett. So it's a kind of rather lovely connection to high fashion in Savile Row and the high fashion of uh, Northumberland House. And then to have that here in Bromley by Bow in front of uh, quite an ordinary street, just have this really beautiful architectural gem here in the centre of East London is, is really spectacular.